Well, welcome, day three of uh, the PowerShell and DevOps uh, Summit. Nice that uh, everyone is uh, still here, still awake. So let's talk a bit about uh, uh, generative AI and how we can uh, make it do less useless things. But before, uh, before we get into it, uh, big thank you to our sponsors. Wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be here uh, otherwise. Um, also, Pets My PC is out there. They're giving away a switch this afternoon. So what I would like you to do is not attend that session because the, the least amount of people there increases my chances. So it's going to be horribly boring. Don't go there. And the switch is already broken, so. <laughs> All right, a uh, little bit about myself for those of you who don't know me. Uh, my name is Jaap. Uh, I'm a developer advocate. Uh, Microsoft MVP, uh, spoke here a number of times. Uh, the reason uh, I'm standing here talking about uh, generative AI is not just because it's a buzzword, and, uh, but it's also because I, uh, I've worked for a company that, uh, that is a startup in this space, so I got to uh, firsthand uh, experience uh, the challenges of building, uh, building tools on top of uh, large language models and um, yeah, the challenges that come with that and uh, the strategies to get uh, benefits uh, out of it. So that's uh, a little bit about uh, why I'm here and talking about uh, generative AI. Um, in addition to that, uh, I'm very lazy. So whenever there's a tool that makes, makes my life easier and can take some of the churn away, um, I happily jump on it, buzzword or not. So uh, yeah, Gen AI can, uh, can uh, definitely help with a lot of that. Uh, as for the structure of the presentation, uh, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, about the history, uh, about uh, prompting, flows of prompting, and after that, we're just going to uh, dive into uh, dive into a demo, show what's uh, what's possible, uh, put into practice a couple of the things that we're doing. Um, when building out the demo, I uh, I was experimenting with two different approaches. Uh, the, one, uh, the one would be to preload all the responses and kind of fake my way to it and cherry pick all the good examples. But I decided that was a little bit boring, so we got rid of that. So we're just going to do it live and we're going to see uh, how it fails or how it succeeds. So if that sounds fun, then uh, you're in the, in the right session. Uh, as for questions, uh, raise your hand, shout at me. We're uh, we're not with that many people here, so it should uh, should be easy to keep it uh, keep it interactive. Sweet, Does that sound good so far. Um, just to get an idea for the room, uh, how many of you are uh, currently using generative uh, models, uh, either OpenAI or Copilot? All right, it's most of the room, so that's good. What's your experience? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's indeed very, uh, very mixed. It also depends on the, on the application and what, you, what you're trying to, uh, to make it do. But yeah, let's, uh, let's talk a bit about the evolution. It's a bit hard to, uh, uh, to pick which ones uh, to go into, but uh, generative AI um, can generate any kind of data. What we're mostly going to be talking about uh, today is code. And, and language, so interacting with, uh, uh, with either the OpenAI APIs or you could use the Azure uh, APIs. Uh, but can also generate images and video. Um, the video one, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with, uh, with the work that OpenAI is doing there, Sora is the latest one that they haven't publicly released yet, but that one uh, made some uh, made some pretty impressive uh, in video videos. Uh, another uh, key word to keep in mind are tokens. If you're not uh, if you're not familiar with tokens, token is about a word. Uh, so every word that you put into the model is counted as a token, and in general, you pay by token. So what you're trying to do whenever you interact with any of these models, you want to limit the amount of tokens unless you have a, a all you can. Uh, uh, all you can use. So if you have a ChatGPT subscription, for example, you can chat for as long as you like. The downside of that is that it has to be interactive. So you're also wasting your own time and 
big advantage of using uh, the APIs is you can run it in the background, can wait for it to complete, and then take a look at the result. Bit of a timeline of uh, AI in general. I didn't, uh, didn't really know where to start. Could have started with Alan Turing, but I think the first, uh, the first chatbot was uh, Eliza, Elisa in the 1960s. Um, I think my favorite bot that ever came out, does anyone remember Microsoft Tay? That one was fantastic. <laughs> Um, in ooh, the contrast is not very good. In 2014, the uh, generative adversarial networks uh, came out. So this is where you have two uh, uh, two networks that compete with each other, uh, and by doing so, get better uh, better results. GPT-3 was released in 2020. Uh, apparently, there was also something else going on that year, but. Uh, uh, at the time, I took uh, I took a look at it. It, it gave some interesting results, but as we're, mo most of us will be aware, the, the, the real big kicker came in uh, at the end of 20, uh, 2022. And I remember uh, at the time, I was uh, at AWS reInvent. This came out, and yeah, uh, uh, GPT 3.5 was re really a game changer where it's uh, got out with some uh, some good uh, good results. So f f what I've understood is that it's very important to include slides with a lot of logos. So memorize these. Very important. <laughs> All right. Prompt engineering. So some of the things that are um, are important. I also shared links uh, afterwards with, uh, with the resources uh, where, this, uh, where this comes from, but include as many details uh, as possible. Uh, so if you're, if you're writing a script uh, or you're trying to solve a problem, trying to provide as much context as possible, as much as, uh, yeah, uh, as, much as possible, but make sure it's, going to, it's sensible, uh, sensible data. So um, the, the models are getting uh, are taking in more and more tokens. So what it means, you can put more and more data in there, but uh, make sure it's quality data as well. So uh, it's not good to ask it write me a script that does X. It might give you the results you want. Uh, that's uh, that's what Copilot does as well. Uh, but providing more context about your environment, your coding style, uh, what you expect it to, uh, what you expect it to deliver uh, makes a big difference. In addition to that, you can either ask it to adopt a persona or tell it that uh, it is uh, a software developer with 30 years of PowerShell experience. So therefore, it would be the only person on the planet that has 30 years of experience with PowerShell. <laughs> But uh, by putting it, uh, by, by, by guiding it and putting it in that state of mind that is should reason from that perspective, you can get better, uh, better results. And one of the things that I did at uh, PSConf EU was uh, I, uh, I prompted uh, ChatGPT to pretend that it, is, that it was Justin Groot. And if I would prompt it afterwards for uh, for either code or for PowerShell questions, it would come up with a better reasoned answer and better uh, quality code. So uh, that one was obvious, obviously a bit of a joke, but by putting it in that context and having it uh, reasoned from that, that frame of mind, uh, it will get better results. Um, yeah, be specific. So not only be specific of what you want, but also be specific of what you expect to get uh, get out of it. So if uh, uh, if you're asking for a, a script, tell it how big should it be. Should it have parameters? Should it be an advanced function? Should it be, should it be a script file? Should it be a module? And Ask it to, uh, and also validate that it understands what you are asking it to do. So instead of immediately asking it to provide you with code or with documentation or with a description, uh, verify that it understands your uh, request. So you can do that, for example, by saying before, uh, 
as multiple approaches before answering, confirm that you understand the request, or before answering, uh, ask me a question if it helps you clarify uh, what I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to achieve. Those are all techniques that can help help you get better uh, better results and better output. And yeah, the last one: give examples. So, if you are um, if you're creating a, a new function that is part of your module, you can provide it with a, a function that you've already created and have it use that as a baseline so it has a better understanding of what it's, uh, what it's supposed to do. If you're asking for unit tests, for example, provide your function, obviously, so it knows what it's, uh, uh, what it's creating unit tests for. One of the strategies there is also to, um, specifically to unit tests instead of asking it to just write me 15 pester tests for, uh, for my function. You ask it, please describe this function. What does it do? What are the paths that uh, the code can follow? And then ask it, okay, for the first path that you, uh, 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 that you described, generate, uh, generate free pester tests that do X, Y, Z. You get better responses then than if you just, uh, yeah, just uh, called ask it to generate unit tests for this function. So you get better uh, better results that way. So that all makes sense? Sweet. This one I thought was uh, was quite funny when I uh, when I read this one. I'm not sure uh, if you've seen this one. You can ask the model to take a deep breath so it uh, uh, it, it would uh, statistically come up with better, uh, better results whenever it, you would ask it math questions. Uh, I've done this myself as well, uh, specifically with, uh, with image generation. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, DALI, whenever it generates images, it's actually not very good at putting text in there. So I would prompt it to take a deep breath to really think about what it's going to uh, output. And it would still mess it up. <laughs> Doesn't always work. Um, but uh, what, uh, what, what is the takeaway here is um, give, give a model time to think. So what I was saying uh, about the unit test example where you, uh, you, you try to guide it towards, uh, towards an end goal. Validate that it understands what you are asking of it. Validate that it understands what your code is doing. Uh, those are all strategies to make sure you get, uh, get better results uh, out of it. And then also ask it what it thinks, it, uh, what it thinks you want uh, from it. And yeah, the additional, uh, additional question one. Another one that I like doing, yeah, obviously also AI generated. Uh, this was the, the seventh iteration. I kept on asking it to make it funnier. I don't think it really got there. <laughs> but one that, uh, that I found uh, helpful, both in getting better results, is having it pretend that it is, uh, that it is a panel of experts. So, Pretend that you are three PowerShell experts and you're sitting in a room and you're discussing how you want to tackle this project and you see a back and forth going on in there. And uh, it especially less useful, but it's especially funny if you, uh, if you make one of the personas, uh, um, what's, a, what's a word for that? Uh, have, have one of the personas not collaborate and mess up the meeting. Uh, I, I wasted half an hour having my Chat GPT personas fight each other. It was fantastic. <laughs> Code didn't get better, but I had a good time. <laughs> um, yeah, so prompt, uh, prompt and flow uh, engineering. So there's a concept of uh, zero shot. So zero shot is you don't give it time to uh, you don't give it time to uh, to analyze to get into the right frame of mind. Just try and get a get a response out of it. It's the quickest way to get. Uh, to get it to produce something, but depending on what you ask, it might not be the might not be the best way. Uh, uh, multiple iterations are extremely uh, extremely helpful. Uh, so the company I work for, they uh, they released a model uh, a model uh, a research paper uh, 
which was called Alpha Codium. And their approach was to uh, summarize. Uh, th their approach was to uh, uh, have GPT-4 compete in, uh, in code competitions. So this is something that uh, yeah, is, is quite common for large language models to get an idea of uh, how it performs. But instead of, uh, instead of just having it output, um, output results, give it unit tests that uh, the solutions need to pass, uh, have, it, have it run its, uh, the code it generates to those unit tests, and if it fails, iterate over it until it works, and then have it, uh, once the code passes the unit test, have it generate synthetic unit tests, and have it iterate and improve its code based on both the existing unit tests and the synthetic unit tests, and that way uh, it was possible to get significantly better results. And even with, uh, with just 100 iterations, uh, it, uh, it, would improve the, uh, it would improve the accuracy of the results that are coming out. So that is, uh, that is something that is actually quite, uh, quite useful, both the multiple iterations and actually being able to either run or test uh, your code. So ChatGPT itself currently also does that for Python code. So it can run its own Python code in a sandbox uh, environment, but we're here for PowerShell. So for PowerShell, we still need to uh, we still need to do it uh, do it ourselves. Um, another one is uh, have the model explore different uh, different approaches. So if it comes up with a solution, ask it to review its own solution. And if you if the solution has multiple steps, ask it. Uh, Ask it to discard two, of, uh, uh, two approaches or uh, two, uh, two steps and come up with two new steps and then have it iterate over that a number of times. And by doing so, you get, uh, you get better results because it can think, rate, uh, and organize, uh, organize itself uh, while getting to the results. Um, yeah, then I covered all that. Any questions about this uh, so far? Does all make sense? Cool. Um, because slides are boring, how about a demo? See what we can uh, can do with uh, specifically PowerShell and uh, uh, OpenAI or any language model and a bit of uh, bit of ChatGPT. Uh, the idea here is that um, I, I mentioned at the start there were two approaches I could go for. Um, I have a number of uh, demos prepared, and afterwards, uh, after those demos are done, uh, I'd like to uh, start a new PowerShell project, but I'm going to rely on input from all of you. So if you already have an idea of what, uh, what I should write, uh, keep that in mind. I'll ask for it later, and we're going to start a PowerShell a PowerShell project from scratch and see what, uh, what we can come up with and how we can uh, iterate and improve based on that. Does that sound good? Sweet. All right, this, I shall make it bigger. Um, I was in the back. Is it all visible? Cool. Sweet. So, interacting uh, with uh, with Open API with the uh, with the uh, API endpoints is uh, quite uh, quite simple. There's a lot of sa samples available uh, for it. In this case, uh, I'm using GPT 3.5 and, and with a completion. So what we do is I store my secure, uh, my, my API token, super secure. We have the endpoint here. We need to do a bearer, a bearer token for the API key. And then the, the body we send out is simple with uh, which model are we using, what kind of token limitation do we want to put on there, and a number of other uh, 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 properties that we can uh, set, and then the response is invoke REST method, and if we want to see the result of what we prompt, uh, we can uh, get it from responses, response choices text. 
So let's run this one. Let's ask it to describe itself and see what we come back with and see if the conference Wi-Fi. So we can see it knows what it is. So. Let's make the output slightly bigger. All right. Um, and to make that a bit simpler to interact with, I just threw this into a function uh, with a, a text uh, parameter in there so we can interact with it uh, directly. So close out this one. So with that, we'll ask it, we're a PowerShell expert. Did they ask it to do? Experienced PowerShell developer with 30 years of experience. Yes, in PowerShell. <laughs> this is a 100x developer, so we got 100x ourselves. So I assign it to a chat variable. I wrap it in parentheses, so it both gets saved to uh, to chat as well as output. So here we have it uh, describe how it would start a PowerShell uh, project. We've assigned this to chat now, so we're going to include this as uh, as information for our next prompt. And our next prompt is going to be have it write uh, have it write a function. Uh, do mind, this is GPT 3.5, so it's not uh, it's not four yet, but it's just to illustrate um, it's just to illustrate what is uh, possible with the models if you prompt it uh, prompt it well, because uh, I'd say GPT 4 is a bit cheating because it's already a lot uh, a lot better, and then th then there's no uh, no real reason to improve the prompting uh, that much. So we can see it comes up with uh, get server info. What it, uh, what it didn't listen to correctly was that I wanted it to be able to run on my, uh, uh, on my Mac. So I suppose technically it can run if I put it in invoke command and run it against the Windows server, but other, uh, otherwise this won't be, uh, won't be successful on my, uh, on my device. And then the next step is uh, going to ask it to take a look at it and make sure that it works and see what it comes up with then. And it still has the WMI object in there. But by, uh, by using an approach uh, like this, you can iterate and improve, uh, improve what, it, uh, what it comes out with. And especially if you do this uh, as a background job while you're, uh, while you're developing, uh, you can you can parallelize it with uh, with PowerShell jobs or with RS jobs. Have it come up with ten solutions with uh, um, uh, ten different solutions. Have it rank it and then only present the two best solutions to your problem as uh, as a solution. And that is something that I find myself doing uh, more and more often, either to help myself uh, get an idea of how I could improve my code or or to uh, tackle a problem. So this is, uh, if we want to, yes. Yeah, quick question. Yep, sure. So the question is, uh, if it doesn't come with uh, with the right result. So it, the example here uh, being, it has WMI object doesn't work on macOS. How do you get it to? Uh, how do you get it to be on the right track? Uh, there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, you can uh, you can actually run the code see what, uh, what happens uh, when the code runs, give it back the error message and tell it, okay, I ran your code, this is the error message. Uh, please, please explain why it, isn't, uh, why it isn't working and come up with three possible solutions of how you would fix this. That, that's one way. Um, you can also point it out yourself. You can tell, okay, but I think you're wrong because this command is not good. Can you suggest a different command or a different way to get this information? And keep in mind that it is X, Y, Z. So uh, what you're doing then is you make sure that it has all the information, all the details, all the 
other contexts to put it in, uh, to, to keep using the correct uh, terminology. Make sure it understands the context well. And that's, uh, that is something that GPT-4 does significantly better than uh, 3.5. Um, does that answer your question? Sweet. Um, the other thing to uh, to keep in mind, whenever you're um, uh, w whenever you're building uh, whenever you're building things, a big advantage of using, uh, in this case, uh, uh, GPT 3.5, is it is significantly faster, even the API, than uh, GPT 4. Uh, especially at peak times. The, the thing to keep in mind whenever you're using any of the API endpoints is uh, when you want accuracy, just get the best model possible. It's probably going to be the most expensive and the slowest one. But if you need to do simple things like a JSON conversion or uh, you, you, you want structured data to be, tra uh, to, to be transposed to something else, then GPT 3.5 is usually, usually good enough. You can then use a, a better model to analyze the results from that. So speed can be, uh, can be in, uh, should be a consideration depending on what you're uh, trying to achieve. So with this, uh, with this, this was custom, uh, so, some custom hacking with invoke uh, web request gives you full flexibility. I've uh, I built a number of tools on top of this. Uh, last year, I had uh, Invoke Pester, Invoke Pester GPT. So what I would do is uh, I would run, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of running Invoke Pester, is everyone familiar with Pester here? Most people are. Pester is a testing framework in, uh, in PowerShell. I would uh, Invoke Pester, I would uh, look at the results. If one of the tests would fail, I would submit uh, the code that it was testing, I would submit the unit test, and it would ask it to come up with two solutions, either fix the code or fix the test. And by, by wrapping that with a invoke web request call, it would usually come up with uh, decent solutions in order to, uh, to fix my code. And But because being lazy is always better, there's also a PowerShell AI uh, module uh, it comes with a lot of commands. Let's do a measure object here. Seventy-three. So that's uh, a decent amount. So once you have it set up, so once again, this also re uh, requires the same uh, API key. So you do need an uh, API token or uh, or uh, Azure API. Uh, uh, token in order to be able to do that. Ah, ah, that is. Um, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I'm going to invalidate this key immediately after the session. <laughs> Here we go. Free token. <laughs> All right. And let's see. It has to be a secure token, so yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we should be able to run it. So you can see, it comes up with a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, description. So I was a bit confused by a couple of things in the keynote. So one of the things that confused me was, what is an unconference? But this is the unconference. Another one that confused me, and the one that I'm not going to do live, James mentioned the C word, which was the reason we didn't have the, uh, the conference for a couple of years. But let's not ask that one, because everything is recorded. Uh, here we have an example. We are uh, actually including some uh, some PowerShell. So let's take a look at Pikachu.json. So we can see we have a JSON object here. Nothing uh, nothing too exciting. 
But the nice thing is we can, uh, can see how it will do with this. Ask it to convert it to YAML, CSV, and TOML. Um, converting it to CSV is something that PowerShell does natively, but YAML and TOML, are, uh, you need additional modules for that. So that is actually something that is uh, useful. And we can see that it comes, uh, comes out with what appears to be decent YAML, decent uh, CSV, and also a TOML that, uh, that looks good. So you can uh, have it do multiple things, but if we just want some PowerShell code out of it, we can also do that. And we can see that does indeed look like PowerShell code that would work. And another one is instead of uh, having it return text, we can also have a copilot. And what that does is it gives you the ability to uh, come up with, uh, with PowerShell code and then also run it directly. It, is, it does ask you first, unless you uh, force it, of course. Uh, but the paths are not correct. So instead of running it, we'll go for explain. There we go. We can see that it can explain your code and you can interactively uh, have it generate commands and also execute it directly. So module is called PowerShell AI. If you want to do any kind of automation and you don't want to build your own wrapper, this one is, uh, is quite easy. As you saw, you just need to enter in your uh, API token or in, in your case right now, my token, because it's still valid for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is uh, that is that part. Any questions so far? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the the comment was uh, there's also Azure uh, Azure OpenAI and that one uh, works very well. And the PowerShell AI module also uh, also supports that. Uh, the module is written by uh, Doug Fink, by the way. He's uh, also an AI enthusiast. He's not speaking here, so I can show his uh, module and pretend it's me. But it's uh, yeah, it's actually Doug. Um, yeah, for you, um, we have about ten minutes left. So, what kind of PowerShell project are we going to build using uh, using what we've uh, discussed? Anything? Can I have a suggestion? Shout something? No. Otherwise, I'm going to point at people. Yes. What are we building? Microsoft Word Web Scraper. Microsoft Word? Learn. Microsoft Learn Web Scraper. All right. Cool. Uh, yes. Uh, let's. Copy paste the earlier prompt we have had. So that was in here. But we want to make sure that uh, that it really knows what's uh, what's going on. So we'll tell it forty years of experience, and Jeffrey Snover calls you when he doesn't know. <laughs> All right. So uh, what I mostly use uh, ChatGPT for, uh, for the, the web interface, is to, to validate my assumptions about the kind of queries that I'm doing. Because the API queries, they all cost money. And uh, this one is a flat fee. So you can experiment and um, yeah, get an idea of what will work and what, uh, what doesn't work. So comes up with a lot, of, uh, a lot of things. But we want an actual script. And we have five minutes. So let's uh, interrupt it. Uh, uh, I want to design a. Webscaper or Microsoft. Learn. 
and provide me with a code sample in PowerShell. So now we didn't give it uh, a whole lot of information, but let's see if we get something that uh, will actually work. Ah. <laughs> Ethical things, come on. <laughs> All right. It's a bit uh, it's a bit basic, but uh, let's uh, let's accept this for the uh, please refactor this code. We need some error handling in here, of course. So try catch is obviously a good idea. We didn't need it. Uh, we didn't need to help it with that. It has identified the correct thing to put in the try block, so that's uh, that's at least uh, good. Ah, oh, that's uh, that's it. I, I, I'm not sure I completely agree with the way it handles catch. So, if you're familiar with uh, try catch blocks, it it uses the it abuses the catch block with an if uh, else if statement. <laughs> this is something that catch should have done. Uh, yeah, just to uh, uh, we'll, we'll pretend this was uh, this was fantastic. We we could, we we could we could prompt it again and ask it to properly make use of catch and have multiple catches using those exceptions. Uh, but for the for the sake of uh, time, we'll just ask it to uh, uh, generate faster, uh, faster test and uh, comment based help documentation. Because obviously we need some unit tests and we need some documentation. The interesting uh, thing about this is there's a concept called uh, TDD, so test-driven development. And if you take that to an extreme, you can uh, you uh, you write your test first before you write any code. I've never gotten myself to do that. The nice thing about uh, the large language models is you can make it do it for you. So uh, that's the only time that I've actually used uh, test-driven development and first writing tests has been uh, by making uh, ChatGPT do it for, for me. So we'll quickly take a look at what it comes up with. All right, describes the parameters, comes up with an example. It, uh, it knows where Microsoft Learn is, so that's good. Selects English US, so a language we all understand. It uh, even comes up with, uh, uh, with notes, so we can put our, our name in this, because obviously we wrote this code, it was all us. <laughs> And let's take a look at uh, what it does with Pester. Uh, there's some bugs in here, so, so we would iterate over this because uh, it should, of course, load uh, load the function or uh, load. Uh, if there's a function in there, it should load the function, and it's not doing it at the correct uh, place because that should be in a before all block. It should not be in the in there. But we can see that by prompting it, by asking it to solve. Uh, solve a problem, first think through it, then ask it to uh, come up with code, ask it to come up with, uh, with documentation, with unit tests. You can get it to, uh, to a decent state. And with that, so what we're trying to do uh, with uh, prompt and flow engineering is we're trying to get the best, uh, the best possible performance out of, uh, out of the models that exist. So uh, what, you, what you can achieve is you can, if you prompt uh, GPT 3.5, for example, well, uh, guided the right way, you can get better results than if you just cold call uh, GPT 4. So the idea is to get, uh, get more bang for your buck by, uh, by guiding it, by helping it understand what you're uh, trying to make it do. So you need to be effective in your prompting. Uh, you saw that the moment I told it that Jeffrey Snover calls it when he has questions. 
that's the moment it, uh, it took it seriously and started writing some decent code. Context is important. So context can mean a lot of things. You can describe your scenario, what you're trying to achieve as well as possible. Context can also be existing code. It can also be error messages. It can be unit tests that already exist, so you can validate your assumptions. Uh, the other thing is everything always changes. So the basics of uh, the, the basics that I described here are applicable to to all models that currently uh, currently exist. Uh, but the exact implementation, the, the the models themselves, they change on a continuous ba basis. But the basics described here uh, do uh, uh, do stay the same. Um, that is the one we needed. A couple of the resources that you can uh, that you can use. Uh, all the slides will be shared, so you don't have to take photos of this, but you can. Uh, platform at OpenAI, that's a guide on uh, prompt engineering. Some of the stuff that we discussed here uh, is also in there. Uh, PowerShell AI uh, module by Doug. I mentioned Alpha Codium, so that is the code generation with, uh, with unit tests and, uh, and dynamic unit tests in order to get good results. I figured I'd throw some YouTube links in there as well. It's a bit hard to pick my favorites, but uh, I really appreciate the content that uh, Andre uh, Kapati uh, makes. AI Explained is also a good one that is not too, too hip, where every week it's the most exciting thing that ever happened. But uh, yeah, explains it quite well. Going forward, uh, yeah, what I, I would encourage you to do is to uh, explore and experiment. Try to uh, identify a problem that you have, find a challenge, and try to fix it using the workflows here. Uh, Chat.openai uh, is my playground. I test my I test my API uh, request there first to get an idea of uh, how it will respond to those. Uh, using these techniques, local models in general are weaker than, uh, are significantly weaker than what we, uh, the, than what OpenAI provides. So by using these techniques of uh, prompting it, providing it with the right context, you can get better results out of uh, out of weaker models, including local uh, models. Experiments, and yeah, if you do build something cool or something not cool, reach out to me, share it, share it with others, because we can all uh, we can all learn from that. With that, we have one minute left for questions. It's a non-AI generated dog. That's actually what he looks like. And we have, of course, the, the, uh, the feedback form. But are there any questions? Yes. Uh, so I've worked with uh, Auto GPT. Uh, for most of my PowerShell, uh, for, for most of my PowerShell projects, oh, the, the question was, do I use any frameworks uh, whenever I'm doing uh, doing these kind of requests? Um, I, I've used Auto GPT, but that's mostly for my non-PowerShell workloads. Wh whenever it's PowerShell, uh, I loop it myself with jobs and yeah, get get results, uh, gather the results that way, and uh, yeah. All right. With that, thank you uh, for being here. There will be uh, snacks out in the hallway, and yeah, thank you for uh, joining today. <laughs>